Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. I'm quoting from 1 Peter chapter 1, which we read this morning, to introduce our topic today, the fruit of joy. We started last week by looking at the fruit of the Spirit, a singular fruit produced in the heart and life of the believer once you know God and God lives within you. Now, just like a tangerine, you got pegs to it, but it's still one fruit. And so if you believe in God, you will manifest these things, particularly if you are walking in step with God every day. The fruit of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. Last week, we talked about the primary one, the one that covers all. The fruit of love. And that this love is not just a love of liking things. It is a love that comes from God, a love that is about sacrifice, sacrificing my feelings, sacrificing my thoughts, sacrificing my life if necessary for the purpose of honoring God and for the purpose of putting others above myself. That is the Christian way, not because it feels comfortable all the time, but because that is what demonstrates the life of Christ to others. And today it is no different as we look at the fruit of joy. The fruit of joy. Pastor, do you mean that God wants me to be happy all the time? Well, there is a time for laughter and there is a time for seriousness, of course. When the Bible here is talking about joy, we have to get God's idea and God's definition of joy. When you look at the life of Jesus, he wasn't smiling all the time. There were times when Jesus was serious. There was time when Jesus, times when Jesus had to address particular issues in an honest way, but always with a spirit of love. But that is why this idea of joy goes way beyond the idea of smiling all the time. You see, joy is something that is produced in your life as a Christian by the presence of God. Now, this might be something that you don't understand fully because, of course, we are socialized to express our joy in particular circumstances. We like to express our joy when things are going well, right? We like to express our joy when there are things that we are passionate about that we are involved in. For example, I know that Kurt loves wrestling. I know that Kurt is into that. And I know when Kurt goes to a tournament and he sees these young men wrestling, I know Kurt is like, yes, I feel joyful about that. Well, not all the time, Kurt, but maybe most of the time, Kurt. Because it is something he is passionate about. You see, you don't have to tell people who are passionate about something to be happy about it. Or to get excited about it. It comes naturally. You know, I miss Sister Ermin this morning. I miss her because I know she would open up her mouth today and say, Hallelujah, praise God for being in the house of God and worshiping in the house of God. She always has a halal praise. Isn't that true? Always a hallow praise. And there's nothing wrong with that. Why? Because she is passionate about her worship of God. And that's the kind of joy that God puts in her heart. And guess what? That's the same kind of joy that God has put in our hearts as well. Why? Because the same God that's in her heart is in your heart. The same God in your heart is in my heart. And so there are things I can learn about joy through the presence of God in my life. Joy comes 
not just from what it is that I'm going through. Joy comes from an understanding of a few things. And hopefully as we look at those things this morning, we will be encouraged to be joyful people. Right now, I think maybe there's been, this has been probably the worst time in terms of people's general demeanor and thoughts about life. A lot of people are depressed and sad and it shows in our demeanor, in our thoughts about things, even in the way we address one another, people are not happy. And unfortunately, it's like a virus. It seeps even into the house of God, even into the heart of the Christian who has every reason to be joyful and yet still finds every reason to complain and to be sad and to feel depressed about the future. Hopefully, as we look at these things, God will lift us above the circumstances and we will find reason to rejoice because God lives within us and we have many, many reasons to be, to be filled with joy today and tomorrow and for the rest of our lives. Let's pray. Father, in these few moments, I ask you, minister to our spirit. Help us to understand that the fruit of the spirit is not negotiable. If we are walking with you, we will demonstrate these things. And we will not just demonstrate them according to our culture or the way we were raised. We will demonstrate them the way that you want us to. Why? Because these are your gifts given to you for your purposes in our life. Help us to be Christians that are full of the fruit of joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Joy comes from a Hebrew word, kara. And kara literally means, within context, it means joy because of grace. Joy because of grace. Now, what is the grace that we experience every day? Grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. That's the acronym. God's riches at Christ's expense expense. In other words, I am experiencing every day God's riches in my life by his presence, by his provision, through his love, through his forgiveness, through my ability to learn more about him. Every day I experience grace. And guess what the Bible says? Because of that grace, I am to be filled with joy. I am to be happy. I am to be excited about my life. Why then are most Christians not that excited? Well, most of us are not excited about our lives because we tend to prioritize things that are not as important. Temporal things. Things that are passing away. I was kind of disappointed this past week when the Golden State Warriors got knocked out of the NBA playoffs. Some of you don't know anything about that. I'm a big basketball fan. And I was excited because I was looking forward to Golden State really challenging for the title this year. But they're gone. And I know some people, and I read it online, people who are depressed, people who have lost money <laughs> because they bet on that thing and it didn't go anywhere. And unfortunately, right now, there are people who cannot even enjoy basketball because their team didn't make it to the playoffs. But you know what I think about that? Chances are, if God should delay his coming, and if I should live long enough, guess what's going to happen next year around this time? Another set of playoffs. And guess what? There might possibly be the opportunity for some people to see the Golden State Warriors in those playoffs. Why? Because it's seasonal. These things happen all the time. And guess what? Even though we put our passion into these things, into sports and into things that we love, chances are they won't have any impact on the food that comes on our table, on the job that we have, on the family that we have, these things have no connection to those important issues of our life. But yet still we prioritize those things so much. And we make those things affect our attitude or demeanor our thoughts about life in such profound ways. Well, my friend, 
if we think about God and God's presence in our life that affects us every single moment of every day, God providing wisdom, God providing food for our tables, God providing the ability to have reconciliation with people who we are estranged from, God providing the ability for us to go about and do our work every day, things that apply to everything that we value in this life. Why is it? That we don't prioritize God in our lives as much as we do basketball. Or as much as we do some other thing that we find um, entertaining to us. It is because we don't sit down and really think about what's important. What really is important in this life. If it is not for the Lord's mercies, we would be consumed. If it was not for God's provision, we would have nothing in this life. Why isn't he most important? And that is why we lack joy. It is because God is at the periphery of our hearts, not at the center. Because if God is at the center, every moment of every day, we're jumping out of our beds and we're saying, hallelujah, thank you, God, for another day. Every day we get up and we eat our breakfast, we say, thank you, God, for providing this breakfast for me. Every day we jump into our cars, we say, God, thank you for the ability to drive around in a car. And especially now, thank you for the ability to buy gas, which is so expensive. We would find so many opportunities to praise God and to be joyful. But we're not because God is not at the center of our thoughts as he should be. Oh, my friend, joy begins with an understanding of God's position in your life. In fact, the fruit of the spirit will never manifest in your life until you begin to understand the centrality of God to everything in your life. <clears throat> what would you have without God? Who would you be without God? Where would you go without God? There is no hope without him. And so understanding joy means understanding the grace of God every single moment of every day. Now, let me make a very clear distinction. There's a difference between happiness and joy. I want to be very clear on that. Because I'm not saying to you today that every one of us is called to smile every moment of every day. Because there's a difference between happiness and joy. Happiness is about what is happening so if something is happening that you like, you feel a sense of happiness. However, joy is different. Joy has to do with your proximity to God or your understanding of grace. So I can be happy because things are happening well in my life. But that's temporary because sometimes things don't happen the way I like all the time. And so happiness is up and down and up and down. But you know what remains consistent? Joy. Joy. Because of my proximity to God, I can be joyful regardless of what is going on in my life. I can be joyful because his presence is guiding me every moment of every day. I can be joyful because I understand that no matter what is happening in my life, all things are working together for good in my life. That's something I can rejoice about regardless of what I'm going through. Do you understand this believer? You have access to something that goes beyond the natural. That is why many people outside of Christ can't understand these things because they don't know what it is to have that vital relationship with God that guides the way that not just we, that not just the way we act, but the way we feel. And if you as a Christian don't allow these truths to affect the way you feel, you're going to just go through life depressed and angry and frustrated like someone who does not know God. But because you know God, you have access to these things. Happiness depends on what's happening. 
Joy depends on proximity to God. That is why, my friend, joy of the Lord is accessible regardless of your circumstance. Let me give you a few scriptures. The Bible says, count it all joy when you meet trials of various kinds in James chapter 1 verse 2. Why can you count it all joy when you're going through trials? Nobody thinks that that's a joyful thing, but a Christian can see it as a joyful thing. Why? Because a Christian knows that what trial is producing is something eternal. Something that is ultimately going to make me more like Jesus. He was perfect. Did Jesus go through trials? Yes, he did. Trials that we would never understand. But trials that made him more and more committed to the Father's will. Oh, my friend. It is a wonderful thing for a Christian to go through a trial and to be able to praise God, not because we are deluded, but because we understand. We understand what God is doing through the trials we go through. The Bible says in Psalm 118 verse 24, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Not because it's a great day and everything is going well today. No, it is a day that the Lord has made. In other words, it is something that has been given to us as a gift through the grace of God. That's why I rejoice in the day. Because if God chose, he would not give me that day. I didn't have to wake up today. But because God has given me this day, I can rejoice in it. That is our understanding of reality. The Bible says in Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 and 18, Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. Hallelujah. Only the Christian is able to say that. The Christian is able to look at what they don't have and instead of complaining about it and hating people who have it, the Christian is able to turn around and to say, I still have the joy of the Lord in my life. Why? Because with the little I have, I am blessed by God. You know, I want to encourage every single one of you, if you have the opportunity, travel to a country, another country. Travel to a place that is not the United States. There you will see people, many people who live in dire poverty and probably are more happy than you are. Why is that? It is because for most people, treasuring the little that they have based on the grace of God is the biggest blessing of life. And if you have a lot, oh my friend, the lot that you have will be a curse to you if you don't realize that God deserves all the glory and honor for it. You see, that is understanding God and God's role in my life. Philippians 4 verse 4 says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Whenever the Bible repeats something, it's trying to knock your head and say, listen, get to it. Rejoice always. And I do have the opportunity to do that if my perspective is right. What does the fruit of joy come from? The fruit of joy comes from two things. The first thing is this. The fruit of joy comes from the joyful nature of God towards his children. So I am joyful because God is joyful. And we don't tend to think about God as joyful. Many times we think about God as judgmental. A God as someone who will judge us or strike us down. We tend not to think about God as laughing or as smiling a lot. Because unfortunately, most of the times we actually connect to God is when we've done something wrong. And that is so unfortunate. Because God is a God of joy and rejoicing over his creation. The Bible says in Isaiah 62 verse 5, For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your sons marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. 
Do you understand that every day that you wake up, God smiles down at you? God is joyful about you. Not because you're perfect. Not because you're always making the right decisions. But because you are his creation. And more than that, because you are his adopted child. He loves you, and part of the way his love is manifested is in joy towards you. Joyful about me? Yes, God is joyful over you. He smiles. He laughs. He's happy with you. And that is the grace of God given to us again. Zephaniah 3 verse 17, the Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt you, he will exalt over you with loud singing. Wow. Did you hear that verse? Does God sing? Yes. Yes. But does God just sing? No, the Bible says he exalts over you with loud singing. So when I sing to God and I sing loudly, am I doing anything that is ungodly? Absolutely not. In fact, what I am doing is what God does over me. Can you believe that? That God loves me so much and is so joyful over me that he sings over me? It gives me a sense of deep and profound conviction. Because am I worthy of his joy? Do I live up to his joy? Or do I disappoint him? But the Bible says here, because I am his creation, he rejoices over me with gladness. Understand that God in his nature is joy. He's not only love. He is joy, and he is joy because he wants to put within you that same joy as you go through a difficult life. The joyful nature of God towards his children is the first reason where we get the fruit of the spirit, fruit of, of joy from. The second reason is this. We get it from the word of God. If you are struggling with being joyful in your heart, chances are you are not diving into and regurgitating the word of God. How do I know this? Well, look at what the word says. First Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 6 says, And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit. You see, the word of God produces joy in your life if you want it to. If every time you hear the word of God, you are saying to yourself, this thing is messing with the life I want to have, you will never be happy. Because you will see God as competing against you for the life you want to have. But if your life is about honoring God and serving him as he reveals himself in his word, you will find that the word of God produces joy in your life. It produces a sense of happiness about life. Why? Because it is a safety net and it is also an encouragement in difficult times. Have you ever been reading the word of God and feeling down and as you read it, you feel lifted? You feel encouraged? It could be anything. Why? Because within the word of God are the living truths that lift our spirit upwards, higher, above this world, and give us hope. Oh, my friend, God wants to give you joy, but you have lack of access to joy if you don't combine the presence of the Holy Spirit with the revealed word of God. Reading it every day, but not just reading it, seeking to apply it to your life. That's how you access supernatural joy. If you fight against God's word, you will never experience the fruit of joy. You won't. Because God only gives it to those who receive his word with gladness. 
John 15, verse 11. These are Jesus' words. He says, these things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. So everything Jesus taught was to give us joy. But we can't understand that joy until we love the words of Jesus more than we love our own perspective about life. Do you see the connection? Everything about Christianity is connected to one thing. Loving the Lord your God before and above all things and loving your neighbor as yourself. If you combine these two realities into your life, everything about Christianity will come to light. And you will begin to experience everything that God promised you in your life. But you have to be committed to God and God's desire for your, for your life first. That's where it begins. None of the fruit of the Spirit will be expressed in the life of those who don't love God. I'll close with this. The fruit of joy produces things that are essential for life. And I've experienced this in my own life. If it was not for the joy of God, I would be lost in depression and probably I would be outside of the church. Why? Because life is hard. Life is difficult. Sometimes it's difficult because of decisions that you make. Sometimes it's difficult just because we're sinful people living in a sinful world. It's hard. It's hard. But I dare you to access something that God has given to you to help you with a difficult life. And that is joy. What does joy produce in me that is essential for life? The first thing it produces in me is hope. Is hope. You can't have hope. If you don't have God's joy. Romans 12 verse 12 says, Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. In other words, whenever I rejoice in the Lord, it produces a light at the end of the tunnel through whatever I'm going through. It gives me hope to make it to the next day and the next day. That is why, my friend, if you are struggling with depression... Rejoice in the Lord and in everything he does for you. That will lift you above the depression that you find. And it will give you a supernatural kind of thing that will inspire you to live. Psalm 30 verse 5 says, For his anger is but for a moment and his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes in the morning. In other words, I know when I am going through difficulty in the middle of my night, I know that if I tarry in joy, it will reap the consequence of hope. It will produce in me hope. And I will be able to enjoy my life. Oh, my friend, is this your experience where God produces hope in your life as you rejoice in him? If you've never experienced that, try God's word. Live in joy and you will find hope. But not just hope, it provides health. Do you know that being joyful makes you more healthy? And I'm not just saying that because a doctor said it. I'm saying it because the word of God says it. The word of God says in Proverbs 17 verse 22, a joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. So in other words, literally the joy of God is a means by which I stay healthy. And God has produced in in me something that keeps me healthy. Do you know people who are always down, always negative? In fact, I checked this out. There is much more likely a chance that those people will experience strokes and heart attacks. It's a proven scientific fact. Oh, Oh, my friend, I know about you. I know sometimes we can't stop the things that will happen to us health wise, but we can certainly take the word of God and apply it to our lives and know that if we live in the power of joy, it literally will keep us healthy.
It's bad holding on to things that keep us down. In fact, it does something in our bodies that's negative, in our minds and in our bodies. Joy keeps us healthy. And finally, it produces strength, which so many of us need. We need strength, the ability to make it, to keep on moving, and to overcome our struggles. In Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, and the B part, it says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. It's your strength. In other words, it is your motivation to being a successful human being. It gives you additional power to accomplish your goals. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Isaiah 55 verse 12. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. What beautiful language to talk about how the world opens up to the joyful heart. You can look at a sunset and because of your depression you can't see the beauty in it. But if your heart is filled with the joy of the Lord, you will see the most beautiful sunset of your life. Why? Because God makes you see it. And there is nothing greater than being able to enjoy the blessings of this life because God gave you the ability and the strength to see it. In Psalm 51 verses 11 and 12, the psalmist says, cast me not away from your presence, O Lord. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. That should be our prayer today. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation. Maybe there was a time in your life, maybe when you just accepted the Lord as your Savior, when everything about life was exciting, where everything about your future was exciting. But maybe because of distraction, maybe because of prioritizing the wrong things, you have lost that joy. Maybe even right now, as I speak to you, your heart is filled with depression and hate and confusion and all the things that right now God's joy has come to take away. Let me say to you, my friend, you have access. You have access through the spirit and the presence of God to something that will give your life meaning. And I want to encourage you with all my heart, live Enjoy, enjoy your life. Not the way people out there enjoy it, but enjoy it through the grace of God as you look every day upon what God is doing for you and you give thanks to him for all those things and you live in the light of those blessings. It is a life that will never be chained down with depression. Why? Because there's always something to give God thanks for. Isn't that true? There's always something to thank God for. There's always something to be joyful for. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Your word gives us just such a wonderful and beautiful breakdown of all the blessings we have through Jesus Christ. And we thank you for that. We've quoted so many scriptures today on purpose because we want Heavenly Father, to see all your promises that you've given to us in your word concerning joy. Joy is not based on what's happening. Joy is based on our proximity to you. Help us to stay close to you so that we might experience your joy. And if there's anyone here today who is not joyful, who is lost in the distractions of this world, who is lost in distractions of their own making. Help us to let go of those things and to remember what matters most, you and your will. And through your presence, help us to experience joy inexpressible and full of glory. Thank you, Lord God, for this encouragement and help us to remember 
Joy is a means by which other people can see that we belong to you. In Jesus' name, amen.